A common myth uh, in people with spinal cord injury is that they may not need to think about fractures because they're young. But uh, bone loss occurs very rapidly after a spinal cord injury, even in young people, placing them at increased risk of fracture. Many people don't really think of fractures as a significant cause of death or disability. Um, so people think, well, they have a fracture and then they have it repaired and then they go home and they recover. But many people don't realize that fractures, like you know, 20 to 30 percent of people who have a hip fracture will die as a result of the secondary complications associated with that hip fracture. People who have spine fractures are at increased risk of breathing problems and digestive problems and chronic pain, and even wrist fractures can compromise uh, the function of your hand. So it's really important to prevent fractures. To prevent fractures, you can do a number of things. So one is talking to your doctor about your wrist and seeing if medication would be right for you, making sure you're getting adequate calcium and vitamin D, and then making sure that you prevent falls or prevent the activities that could cause fractures. So for example, if you are doing transfers, making sure you're transferring in a way that your, your body and your legs are facing the same way and you're not twisting your legs, well, if you have a person helping you transfer, making sure that they know how to transfer you safely, making sure that when you go through doorways that you're checking to make sure that your, your foot or other limbs are not going to get caught. And then um, if you are uh, ambulatory, if you're walking, um, to either use assistive device if you need one or work on your balance to make sure that you're stable when you're, when you're walking to prevent falls. Uh, there are a number of uh, exercises that can be used to challenge balance, to improve balance. Um, and even if you are not a person who walks, um, working on balance and sitting so that you're less likely to, to fall over or fall over your chair or using assistive devices like a seatbelt to prevent you from falling. Al is an incomplete spinal cord injury. So he was injured in his neck or cervical spine. Al has some movement and sensation below the level of his injury. Al's goal is to maintain as much mobility as possible. I learned years ago that I had to maintain what I had so that I could do my transfers. So I had the balance if I was on a rough, rough terrain or uh, slopes that it wasn't going to throw me forward or balance. So my legs and my, my uh, waist were very important to help me keep my my balance in that and so I can also push myself back in my chair if I start sliding. These were all important to me and I knew the only way to keep that was to work out and maintain it. What's happened is every time I've had a setback whether it be from say uh, my uh, injury on my knee that flares up occasionally or my groin that may start giving me a problem that uh, I tore a muscle years ago, or, or you get bad case of the flu, cold or flu and it, you're not able to work out for so many days, then every time you start going back, it gets harder and harder to achieve the same level and ease of doing things that you were able to do it before. So over the years, uh, the, every time you try and climb that mountain, it gets harder and harder to get back up to the same level. You always feel like you're kind of looking farther up the mountain as you over the years. By maintaining Al's ability to use his leg muscles uh, to get him up against gravity, we target his bone health. So we know that incompletes that can move on their own volition and do those functional movements have a lower risk of osteoporosis. I prioritize what is important to me. And my strength in my legs has always been very important for me to do transfers and also just the ability to be, you know, push myself back in my chair. So to maintain my posture is so important. 